start when we're like, hi, thank you for calling. <laughs> it. Thank you for uh, joining us today with the Play Weird stream, uh, joined by Ink and Liar, and we are going to continue character creation uh, for Through the Breach. You may notice that we have a sad, sad hole in our our, our little group today. Uh, CJ is not able to join us, but we will have a little something special from their character coming out within a week or so. Uh, so keep an eye on it. It will be loaded up to our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, so today we are going, oops, we are going to be making Tessa's character. Tessa, Hello. tell me, a, tell me a little bit about what you're looking to uh, get out of play. Uh, okay. Um, well, I have definitely been a huge fan of the guild for too many years now. Um, so I'm thinking of doing something maybe a little bit indebted, a little bit kind of blackmailed by um, the law and order of Malifaux City. I'm trying to either break free or climb the ranks, depending on what cards I end up pulling and how things end up going. Alrighty, and we talked about this before we went live, but you said there's a specific Destiny spread that you are wanting to, to use, correct? Yes, um, the Destiny spread I will be using is the Ram's Head Tarot from the Above the Law book, okay. which lets me um, have some base guild allegiance. This is a nice little shot of the spread. Um, Alrighty. So you're looking at someone play who might, might, might be a little bit blackmailed. Uh, the guild can do a little blackmail as a treat. Um, just a little blackmail. Just a little bit. Um, so, let, are you able to click on the cards, the card deck? Um, I think so. I can draw. Um, yeah. Do I All draw right. the card? Okay. Uh, that's why I wanted to check. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that way we can have you do the flipping. Um, so it's not just you sitting there looking pretty. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So let's shuffle that deck real quick. Um, I do not have the shuffle button. That's I can on shuffle. You. Um, mm -hmm. doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me shuffle it for you. It is all nice and shuffled. Now feel free to click to draw. Okay. And it's going to be... Um. It didn't okay. At least okay. At least actually press one. That that'll explain it. Yep. <laughs> All right. So you are going to click that to flip it over for me. Okay. And then do I stick it on? Yep. All right. And so it's going to take them out. All right. Yep. And that is actually the perfect spot for it because that is your. Oh, you can put it back. Oh, sorry. Uh, down at the bottom. Um, we are making it is forming the bottom of the V. That is our Ram's head tarot. Um, that is your vice card, and we are looking at the suit on the vice card, which in this case is Rams. So, the Guild of Mercantilers has a well-deserved reputation of being incredibly brutal and corrupt. That reputation tends to attract and create a certain type of person. Your vice card explains what your bad trait is. If you use this to take the place of one of your other uh, Destiny cards, uh, you will have the listed vice. The listed vice for Rams is sadism. The character is prone to beating or inflicting other violence upon helpless or otherwise weaker characters. So keep that in mind. If you decide to take a five of Rams to replace one of your cards, that's what you'll get. Um, okay, cool. All right. Um, so... Um, Sounds like a lovely person. Well, uh, additionally, there's additional effects based on what card uh, it gets, it replaces, but we'll see if Tessa makes those decisions. Um, <laughs> Always bad decisions. It's one, right? of the, like... one of the rules we're going with here. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to deal a card off the top of the Fate deck onto the upper left space above the vice card so wonderful that will be and Oops. i'm putting it there that works perfectly that... fine all five. right five so we are going to be looking at which special division 
is employed or you employ, are employed by yeah and this is in, this will be great oh you have the option of being in the guild guard um it will give you your division skill will be noticed additionally uh you could if you swapped it you could be a guild guard with intimidate uh as your 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 background division i feel like intimidate definitely works with like the sadism trait that we seem to be going for all right then we will be so i don't know if I'll... i'm honestly thinking it might just be a good idea to hit the ball rolling <laughs> I mean, why not? Let's. Uh, and also remember, we can work if it's overtime. The big, the, the biggest goal of this is to make sure that we're all having fun. So if you're like later on, oh, I'm not sure I really want to do the sadism thing. We can always look at what else your destiny spread would be. So I'm mm -hmm. very, I'm a very accommodating fate answer. So, but let you said you want to do that. So let's put this. Ooh, let me put it. Aha, there we go. Um, all righty. And one more thing that I totally forgot. Division. I believe is my body next, if memory serves me right. Yes. Your next one will be your body card. Uh, and this one will be directly above, you'll put it above the vice card. Cool. Just getting used to roll 20. My apologies. No, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, so, we're looking at the Eight of Crows. Eight of Crows will give you, in your physical aspects, a negative two, a negative one, a zero, and a plus two. Okay. Hmm. Double checking, and I am putting, I'm making note of your destiny, your body fate, as it's called. That will be, but only until the blood dimmed eclipse. I'm sure that doesn't sound ominous at all. No, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen in, in Malifa City? I mean, I'm there to protect people. Blood dimmed? That sounds like a nice occasion, right? Yeah. <laughs> totally. All right. So next, we're going to be looking at your root skills. So flip for me again. Yep. I probably should start doing this in the interim bit that's why because i am bad at computers i can told that I'm is a... a two of tomes two of tomes do, do, do. your root skill numbers are three three two and two that's not bad for starting Pretty, pretty talented individual. Right? They, they, whoever taught the you. The guild only you. hire the best of the best. I have a guild game that I'm playing in, and that is not the case for our guild game. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping up the media representation here. <laughs> um, let's see, as the curtain rises one last time. All righty. Do me a favor and flip for me when you have a chance. Yep. Um, which whereabouts do you want this one? It's just blanket it there. I'll let you move them. Ooh, nine of masks. That's a that's a pretty good one. I'll take I'll take that. 
Uh, let's see. So we, you are looking at a minus one, a zero, zero plus two for your mental aspects, mm -hmm. which is pretty pretty dang good. Yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely had worse characters. I only have worse characters like that. <laughs> My first ever through the breach character was a pregen named Smashley. Um, that's not actually her name. Her, her first name is Ashley. It's from the Stitch in Time uh, book. If you offer them your loyalty. All right. And now it's time for the Endeavor card. Indeed. Which will be a Two of Crows. Two of Crows. You're looking at a three, three, and three ones. I'm just getting triggers everywhere. Is right, what I'm right. Like just starting off strong. Um, it's very. It's gonna be a very flashy character. I'm gonna need to make some kind of you know, very cocky kind of analysis or something. I don't know. I think it's something fun. <laughs> <laughs> And then with your division, you will sort the living from the. Oh, that sounds nice. You will sort. <laughs> I feel like my character needs to have like the ram's head tattoo that you have on the new recruits page in the book. Right. I just feel like that's necessary now. I feel like I need to go all in on that. So I'll show it obviously throughout the campaign because the. I think the other characters definitely probably won't be overly favorable towards the guild, but I feel like I need to have a Ram's head ta like, tattoo somewhere. That's fair. Um, well, and remember, like some guild members work with the Explorer Society, so it's not completely unheard of. We do have a corpse in the party, though. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, a really well-preserved one. Yeah. It's a very well-preserved one. It really sell. smells at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just smell like the walk-in cooler at work. <laughs> it's just oh, oh, that that is that sounds that smells like sadness and frozen tears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very good to have a little bit of a cry. Um... <laughs> just don't shake the hand. Oh yeah, I mean it'll it'll just be cold. Oh, because yeah. Tessa... I'll still describe it. Because you uh, brought in or replaced your division card with uh, your vice card, you will start with an extra 25 script. Hell yeah. Right? Starting, <laughs> starting with the blackmail and bribery early. <laughs> we all know what this is for. Yeah. <laughs> I got paid to go beat some guy up in the band of a back alley, apparently. It's perfectly fine. It's normal. It's totally normal, right? Alrighty. Yeah, like, um, don't question where I got the money, and you know, everything should be good. Let me see here. Now I am just. Let's talk about a little, a little bit about what your. Let's start with your background. Um, slash your. Let's start with the first half of your tarot, basically. Uh, okay. Um, so we've got some notes here, basically, uh, that also I am going to pass these over to you in chat, Tessa, so that Please you can. have them. Do, do, do. Um, and Tessa, the italics are your destiny spread. Mm -hmm. And if you will, uh, would you be willing to read out what your destiny spread is after I send this over and you you look upon it and weep? I mean, yeah, it's not going to be great, is it? <laughs> I mean, every destiny spread sounds ominous. Like, I think it's required. I... Yeah, I get, I'll give, give, gonna give you that. All right, I sent it to you on Discord, dear. On Discord? Yeah. Yep. 
Cool. So, um, you will sort the living from the dead, but only until the blood, and only uh, sorry, words, but only until the blood dimmed eclipse, as the curtain rises one last time. If you offer them your loyalty, and it will end as it began. See, it's only mildly ominous. I I've, <laughs> again, I've had worse. I, I've had worse things. Um. That I've pulled from decks before. Wonderful. So let let's with uh your your spread done. Let's keep in mind what kind of things you you'd be looking for uh for how this character began. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking someone from like. Not necessarily like a well-off area, but mm -hmm. enough that I can socially climb and is very much looking to prove something. Mm -hmm. Like the parents were like okay, and and looking to get a one step higher. Okay, so yeah, like like it's one of those things. Like you didn't have a terrible life, but you, you wanted more when you were growing up. Yeah, it's like I was sent to a nice school, but was definitely on the lower echelon of that nicer school. So now I've got the opportunity to show and like throw my weight around a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. not necessarily physically, but more like you know, I don't imagine being very physically strong or imposing, but more I know a lot of people, and I've got enough things that can back me up in that regard. That's um, fair. I assume I'm pretty good at dodging a punch. All right. Through so. years of practice. <laughs> You'll need that for dealing with me. Are you can immediately attack me, Max. Uh, we'll <laughs> see. <Just> on sight. <laughs> <laughs> like a very punchable character. <laughs> I'm very good at punching. Yes, but you're also very good. Like Ember's very good at charming too. Oh no, she's she's pretty nice. But I'm just saying, at some point, you might need that. You might mm -hmm. need it. That's fair. <laughs> You're like, I might need to punch you a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm, that's I'm her thinking, way of making friends. I'm thinking Grace <laughs> is going to be Grace and Speed to be like their two decent um, physical attributes. All right. Let me... Let me put the plus two into Grace. One moment. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Do you have a a name or a placeholder currently? Um, not yet. Okay. Um, I'm thinking. Hmm. Again, like obviously with the time period, um, thinking where I would probably be able to socially climb. Um, obviously, the British Empire isn't quite the strength it was in actual history in Malfo. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm kind of thinking maybe like a guild outpost somewhere else. Okay. Um, almost assuredly female because I'm playing them. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone will be a little bit confused that everyone that knows me at least will be a little bit confused if I decided to play a male. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Would you say that she, so she had a, you know, a, a pseudo middle class upbringing. Um, do you want it to be that her parents were perhaps mid-level guild? And yeah. Like, I could be better than that. Yeah, that's, that's probably a good reason obviously to move to Malifo, like where the height of the guild's power is. Mm -hmm. Leaving from Earth where the guild have like power, but like, well, let's go where the actual action is and let's go where I can make a name for myself in the guild. Where no one can really tell them, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. And you said grace and speed are what you're looking at as having your, your highest aspect speed? Yeah. All right. So... I'm thinking grace being my highest. Put the plus, we'll put the plus two into grace. Okay. Uh, one of the zeros in speed? Yep. Which one we'll do you put... want the negative... Uh, what is it? The negative one in? Put a negative one into resilience so I don't immediately go down if I do get caught. <laughs> that's fair. No, that's fair. And then we'll put another zero. Um, 
All right. Now, looking at skills, are there any skills that you think would have been most useful to have in, that her character's imp parents would have imparted on her? Um, they would have been from parents. I think obviously kind of deciding what the parents would have done within the guild. So I'm kind of thinking like lo like mid level like trying to get into bureaucracy. So I definitely mm -hmm. would have had like an active interest in studying it. Okay. So let's. So what are my root skills? Can we ever check? Let's see. So bureaucracy. Oh, I think it's like all oh, three. Go ahead. It's two threes and a two, and two twos. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's put a three into bureaucracy. Okay. Seemed like something um, would be important to study. It is definitely one of those words I never uh, remember. Other spells. All right. Um, let's also go with another well, over three. Um, let's go and put my three probably in either convince or deceive. All right. Kind of thinking deceive and then a two and convince. Okay. Lie my way into some of the nicer parties at the school. And then sometimes, like, then you use convince to uh, make sure they, they let you stay. Yeah. <laughs> See if you're not scared and convince to stick around. Awesome. Oh, you have one more two for your, your younger years? Um, evade. I okay. imagine they would have been punched a lot <laughs> <laughs> when the convince failed. <laughs> that, that, and then that they blatantly worked. refused to leave. <laughs> no, you have to catch me. All right. Now, moving on to those. Onto mental, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I think it's gonna have to be in cunning there too. Mhm. Mm I think the two I has to be there. I think so too. I think it it, it works best for you in cunning. Um, yeah. Um. The only negative um is in. Uh, I only have one negative for mental, which mm -hmm. is minus one. So let's probably put that into charm. Okay. I might have been a little bit obnoxious. A little bit, just just slightly. Just just a slightly obnoxious. That makes sense. Definitely thinking themselves better than they actually are. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've all been that person. Yeah. At various points in our lives. All right, and now you get to distribute two threes and three ones. Yeah, so I think this is obviously when I've been picked up by the guild. Mm -hmm. um, and, okay, so the pursuits I'm kind of thinking of, because mm -hmm. I think that at this point I can probably should, really should think about it, you know, practically. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking cutthroat. Is just a good one for it to have like the like a fencer style, you know, holding your own. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're not like, because if they're going to go into combat, they're not going to be able to throw a punch normally. That's fair. So being able to dodge and weave is good. Um, alternative, um, alternative Aqualite Manifesto. So how about? Um, I think bureaucrats are also a really fun pursuit to play around with. Well, remember, you can also pick up pursuits before each session. So you can Indeed. taste test a little bit. Um, I mean, so from the story you've kind of told, like been telling so far, um, would you say that your character was lonely? I think that depends if you're asking them or if you're asking them honestly. It's two different answers. If you, uh, out of character, are they? Yes, like, definitely. Then I would, honestly, no, 
never hurts to try Manifester and maybe you make yourself a friend. Yeah, which is definitely something I'm thinking. Um, I'm also thinking, obviously, with them being Guild Guard base, as, like, where they're coming in at, um, the Guild Guard are very rarely getting the more diplomatic jobs. Yes. Um, and that with is the sadism true. route going down the having the ability to hold their own in a fight from the start, and then as they're starting to develop more in the Malifaux side of it, if they've only just moved, mm -hmm. starting to develop more powers while they're over there. I do quite the idea that they've only recently came over from um, the occupied station. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking at your like at some uh, uh, some of the other pursuits you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. If you wanted to go with bureaucrat, bureaucrat is great because every division needs a bureaucrat. <laughs> like yeah. you know, you might this might make you quartermaster. You know, for for your uh, your guild guard patrol or whatnot. Um, cutthroat, that definitely makes you an effective guild guard. It also means that other people might disappear too. Yeah, I'm thinking with the sadist, with the sadism route. You want to start with cutthroat then? I think it makes sense regarding what cards I have. That, that's perfectly fine. You're not going to hear me tell you no. Um, unless you're like... Um, I also think the like whole one v one me aspect the cutthroats have again mm -hmm. kind of fits in with the little bit too cocky for what they're doing. So for viewers at home, one uh, on one is the zero step advancement from cutthroat, which is a pers basic pursuit in from nightmares. One on one cutthroats use a mixture of speed and strength to quite literally outplay an opponent. This narrow focus. Uh, allows fighters to hone their raw skill rather than worry about fighting for their lives. As such, there are very few who can outfight a cutthroat on equal terms. If this character is engaged with only one other character, when she resolves a close combat attack action, she gains plus one to her final duel total. Um, and when making a melee, pugilism, martial arts attack, uh, this character may substitute grace for might or speed when calculating acting value. So super handy. Yeah. So with that idea, I'm going to put current pursuit, cut throat, um, and your on the pursuit ability. When this character fails a close combat skills duel, she may draw a card. During the epilogue, a character on this pursuit may advance any close combat skills in addition to those skill advancement options presented by the Fate Master. So, um, you're going to be real good at hitting things, specifically like from one-on-one, -on -one, from behind. Um, yeah. So, awesome. Maybe that's at least a little bit in my favor. So, does this mean that when we're looking at your later in life skills... We're going to be looking at some of those close combats. I'm thinking at least a couple of them. Right. I'm thinking they're already pretty good at dodging a punch. Oh. Um, I'm feeling like... Um, um, probably melee. Um, All right. Kind of, um, the guild frequently going to be carrying a saber on them. Um, let's see uh, do you have any opinions on do you want like long range weapons or I'm, I'm thinking let's probably put one of the threes into melee base with an actual weapon mm -hmm. um, right. would have had like some fencing lessons being like a at least middle class family. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's obvious. Middle class support. Especially like middle class uh, minor aristocrats tended to. Yeah. Do it's that vaguely like pompous, but. Yeah, and it's 100% like, well, a lady of breeding. Yeah. Give it a little bit of class and standing. All right. Um, there's also archery. 
something that which I feel like I need archery at least a little bit. So, um, what, uh, are you looking at making your other three a combat or more of a training or crafting skill? I'm thinking more of a training crafting. Okay. Um. I feel like, obviously, again, we're going down the route of this is when they started to join the guild. Mm -hmm. So what they would have probably picked up with in training. Um, so I'm kind of thinking notice. Notice? All right. Um, keep my eye out for things and... Or track. I'm thinking either track or notice. Well, hmm. I definitely will have both. It's just which one the three is going to be in. Honestly, if you're the type, nothing that's like that is detail oriented. I believe notice would be a little bit better for you. Yeah. Let's go with notice and then we'll put a one in archery and um, probably also at least a one in martial arts. Okay. I assume you would have studied at least a little bit of it. Hand-to-hand -hand combat training in you know, hmm. orientation. That's great. That is. And then you have one more one. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I want it to be a training skill. I'm thinking athletics. Which I'm aware they wouldn't be great at. Maybe acrobatics. I'm going. I'm checking real quick. To, I know there is the difference, but I always mix them up. Um, yeah. Honestly, acrobats would probably work best because you are all about getting out of the way and whatnot. Yeah, I'm thinking acrobatics. That one is great. That is sweet. All right. I'm currently very mindful of the fact of that as a ruling, it has to be I only am hitting one person. Mm -hmm. If they happen to also have like Max hitting them in the back with a sledgehammer, you know, that's just their bad practice. <laughs> that's I, I see what you're referencing. Um, let me think on that. It will also like there will definitely be situations where that might that would work. There might be also situations where uh, it would go real bad if it happens. But... Oh, entirely, oh. yeah. <laughs> I don't Alrighty. think you join the guild out of entirely good decisions, though. I mean, some people do. I think out there somewhere, right? Like, it works pretty well for Padilla. Like, we've got guild supporters in the chat, right? Like someone's gotta gotta be like, yeah, the guild aren't all terrible people. Oh, I don't think they are. I, I just revel in those that aren't. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so we are now at the very. Oh, you get one last thing. You get into, you get a rank and intimidate because of your your division skill. Hell yeah. Uh, so what stat is intimidate from? Like what 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 does it use? Yeah. I wanna say I should know this. Tenacity skill. I believe so. Yeah, okay. I can work with that. Um, let's see. Now you get to modify. Mm -hmm. uh, you can increase one of your aspects by plus one. Or you can gain two ranks in a skill you do not already possess. Yeah, I'm thinking of increasing my speed by one. All right. It's where I'm currently at, just to kind of fit in with the kind of ducking and weaving kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. That makes complete sense. Now let's talk about your talents. Because derived aspects is just simple math, and simple math is boring to do on the stream, so we are skipping that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll have them filled in after the uh, we do our halfway 
short break. Now you have so many talents to choose from, and I will be assigning you a specific talent, much like I did for Ember. Do you have any books that you want to look at first for talents? I'm probably going to go with Above the Law. Okay. Um, let's stick in with, you know. Hmm. There's a very scary Sonia burning someone. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember all the different ones are. Because unfortunately, um, I do not remember them. No, that's fair. Um, so, advice for idiots is not. Uh, I will name ones that you have uh, some. that you meet the prerequisites for if they have a prerequisite, all right? <laughs> um, so, one. Uh, the first one that you could take is Badge of Office. I bring this one up because you are at a resilience minus two. So it requires resilience minus two or lower. Uh, character mm -hmm. must be a in skilled employee or have the infiltration talent. We've established that you're going to be for the guild. So it says yeah. whether it's luck. Fate or heavy-handed symbolism, attacks that would otherwise kill this character tend to bounce harmlessly off her guild badge. Um, actually, that is going to be the one I give you for free. I just looked okay. at it, and it's perfect. It means once per session, um, you can discard a card to have the attack striked off the badge. Uh, it's reduced. It means it re uh, reduces damage to one, um, and its triggers and other effects are negated and it does not cause any critical effects um glass gets around it though so okay you have a very very lucky badge um which they will carry with them everywhere <laughs> why? Like, why not this do you know how many times this baby saves me literally every day of my life <laughs> <laughs> I have some backups just in case. All right, looking at other ones you have, can do. Um, do, do, do. Hmm. You do not have every man. Um, you can take guild training. I can take guild training, which is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm definitely feeling a need to increase my um, my leadership throughout this. All right. Um, <clears throat> um, like throughout the campaign, I don't have to start out with if, if if the character grows. That's fair. No, that's fair. Um, let's see. I am willing to let you because you can by default take the guild guard one. Uh, which will give you pluses on social with non-guild characters mm -hmm. but, uh, when in uniform. I will even say showing your badge will be enough. Um, if there is a division you want to eventually go into, uh, you can let me know and I, I could be persuaded to let you uh, have the guild training from that. Okay, we've discussed loosely a little bit um, off stream with what I'm thinking um, about who who in the guild have kind of, or at least I want to have sponsor me in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I would like to eventually, I don't think I want to start there, but I think I want to move my way into the to Elite eventually. Okay. Then I Which, will as far as I'm mind. aware, I can take guild training multiple times with the different ones, can't I? Yeah, nothing says you can't. It just says you so, must be a guild employee uh, or have the talent and bureaucracy or two of two or higher. So I'm thinking of starting with the guild guard one, and then moving, then eventually taking elite as a future one. Okay. So, let's see. badge of office. 
Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit about just generals with your character and also what type of tie you can have to Max's character. Um, because I don't want it to be the first time all three of you are meeting for Session Zero. Um, having some sort of working relationship um, yeah. would be best. So, Max, do you have any thoughts? Um... Shit. Uh, I don't know. It's it's gonna be weird, right? Because I'm very illegal, even though I don't quite look it. My cast definitely would not know you're illegal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It'd be weird for her because she'd be like, "Ooh, if they find out, I'm gonna die." <laughs> you know. Um. Maybe you found me and took pity on me when I was out wandering with a big hunk of ice. Well, from what I'm aware of, um, you're doing Explorer Society, yeah? Yeah. I just got betrayed by them and left to die. Mm -hmm. And then died. And I know CJ is also thinking Explorers. Mm -hmm. So it could be going down that kind of tactics. Okay. You know, very much playing a character who is hungry to move up ranks. Mm -hmm. So volunteering of a, hey, yeah, no, like making sure this expedition goes in favor of the guild and retrieving artifacts. I'm willing to do that. Yeah, no, sign me up. I'm literally whatever. Death mission, sure. <laughs> so we've done like a couple missions together, you think, beforehand? Or? Yeah, like if you go on Explorer's side to kind of route like retrieval mm -hmm. of dangerous artifacts, that as much as you are paid to bring all of them back, one or two of them just so happens to always seemingly go missing whenever I'm on shift. And make their way back to guild offices. I probably wouldn't notice. Kind of. Um, so I kind of have this idea, and let me know okay. if, it, if it's too out there for y'all. Okay. But um, because the Explorer Society is like seen as a reputable society, they do stuff with Malifo, uh, uh various organizations and whatnot. Um, it could be that you were asked. To investigate uh, potential smuggling that's been happening uh, and interfering with Explorer Society endeavors, and that's how you and you found Ember in the process. Like you went to a cave, you were looking, you know, you thought this might be a cache of of contraband um, or stolen artifacts that were taken from the Explorer Society, and you find a big frozen lady that you kind of went, "Hey, I knew her before." Yeah. Okay. That works. Because like, it would also give you a reason on why, like, you want to help her without, like, you know, oh, she might, like, I can't believe they left you here. I can't believe you're still alive. Still thinking that, like, you know, perhaps she's still alive. Yeah, she just got <laughs> trapped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, awesome. The cold never bothered me anyway. Oh. Um, if we, I need advance warning if if singing's gonna happen randomly. Um, just just as a courtesy, that's all. Um, okay, I got you. <laughs> but if you decide to sing, let it go. Like I can, I'll be there with the flashing lights to make it look epic for you. Oh, thank um, you. okay, <laughs> appreciate it. All righty, so. If y'all are okay with this, um, I would, because I would like to take a quick, like, 10 minute break so everyone can wet their whistles, go to the restroom, whatnot, um, while I finish up this sheet. And then uh, we can talk about what are the rest of our session zero planning, what things we're looking for specifically, uh, what type of stories, and uh, safety mechanics, things like that. Um, okay. All Sounds right, good. so folks, we will be back uh, in just a few minutes. 
Uh, so yeah, see you right back. See you soon. Cool.
And we're back. Thank you so very much for uh, waiting through that short break. Um, wow, McBluff, you have discovered the emotes in chat. Um, I see some spinning skulls. I see, is that a dead Aussie skull? I think that's a dead Aussie skull. Lots of skeletons. Um, <laughs> McBluff, our biggest stream fan. Um, all righty. Um, Tessa, you have a grand total of 35 script for Helen, by the way. Tessa, Hell yeah. That's a great name. Helen? I um, think Helen sounds too distract. And I, uh, and honestly, peruse like various things you want and, and let me know. Um, and we can talk about what the, mo the shopping spree montage for Helen is. Because I assume okay. I, in my brain, there's a montage. Like, I'm definitely imagining a montage. I also get 20 script worth of combat weapons and armor. Okay. So you have armor. just in general 35 for whatever you want. And yeah. then 20 for script. <laughs> the guild to get out their, 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 their troops. You're just going to you're just gonna have all these hidden pockets with pointy things. Hidden pockets and coats and Pointy knives and, yeah, pointy things. Daggers are a girl's best friend, right? Yeah. Um, oh, the final, final, final step is making your twist deck. Um, considering making a twist deck also looks at, uh, while I, I ask Max some probing questions about uh, Ember, Tessa, if you happen to have uh, the trigger section handy. Um, um, I, would... I can grab it. I can grab my back up in the book about the PDF. That's fair. Uh, if you want, uh, uh, the quick is 190. It, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, 190 starts the skill triggers. Um, and just, okay. yeah, and just ha take a look. Uh, because that will, when you're picking your suits, you're going to likely want to look at what trigger, triggers you're going to be doing in the future. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, Max. Hi. Uh, tell me more about Ember. Like, what was she like before she became a popsicle? Um, so she was always kind of like very level-headed i imagine very okay. steadfast definitely the rock of any adventuring party um okay. the explorer society obviously she would be she'd be the one they bring is like the extra muscle mm -hmm. um as far as like her past and stuff goes i imagine she had a pretty decent upbringing probably some stern parents nothing too crazy there okay um I forget exactly what all like early skill she learned because it's been a week and I forgot. <laughs> um, or was it two weeks? Jeez, it's been two forever. Weeks. It's been two, weeks. It's two weeks, yeah. Ah, <sighs> life stop. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, what are you looking for in particular? Because I can oh. probably answer those questions better. You know what? I created some questions. For a for for CJ oh wrong one, um, I'm showing you boring work things. Uh, <laughs> so my thought mm -hmm. is that uh, we can look at some of these questions, uh, and I can throw in some of my own, and you can give me an idea of like what an in character response for Ember would be. You don't have yeah. to role play it, but just get an idea of what type of things. Gotcha. Um, I like it. Okay. Awesome. So, have what is your full? What is Ember's full name? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that one a little hard from the start? Uh, usually takes me a minute to make those, but I'll work on it. I will work on it. That's fine. Uh, do you have an idea of in general where Ember is from, Earthside? Um. So, are there like, I assume there's like specific, like very specific regions in Malifaux, and or is it well, just like 
So you can pick just about any place earth side okay. roughly that correlates to uh turn of the nineteenth century. Uh got you. Nineteenth, okay. twentieth century, uh America or the world. So mm -hmm. um some notice no notable things, pardon me, is okay. if you come from uh the Slavic area, like the Russian area, mm -hmm. um there's this there's this pesky figure known as the undying czar um okay. <laughs> that that rules over that area uh okay. the uh asian areas formed into the three kingdoms um mm -hmm. it's it's aspects like that but if you give an idea i could probably give you uh, a vague um i mean the the uh slavic area kind of sounds up her alley okay kind of kind of zarya looking from overwatch if that makes any sense or sounding <laughs> i don't All know right. if i can pull that voice off but we'll see but that's fine uh <laughs> well that you know that's helpful um uh, making a note right here uh part of that is also because like that i can feed you some like rumors about what what type of things you've experienced back home um all righty what other questions can i throw that is still the wrong thing um where'd it go where'd it go there they went uh i apologize so um our next question is how long ago did you enter malifo are you thinking like have you been in the breach just like a few months and you got left have you been here for a while Max, we seem to have lost your audio. Let me see why. I muted myself. That'd be <laughs> cool. Hold on, Max. I'm so proud of you. It would be, I think she'd have been around for at least a few years. Okay. Um, kind of gotten a good idea of things. Got a, got a big hammer. Pretty confident at this point. And then she got left behind. Oh, oh that's so sad. Just, <laughs> just enough to like be dangerous. Yeah, for real. All righty. So, um, has and has has she always been with the Explorer Society, or did she spend some time on her own finding herself before joining? Um, she probably. So when you when you come here, how does it work exactly? I'm not. Like... Most people take a train after saving up a lot of money to pay the guild uh, fees mm -hmm. and go into a, the train and it drives through a giant portal, a okay. giant breach that's in uh, Southwest U US, so. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, cool. So she probably, she probably took a little bit of time to find herself, probably okay. not that long before she found like a a good way to utilize her skills okay. um maybe worked in some kind of construction job for a while <laughs> no that makes sense uh especially if she's really good with her hands and it doesn't shy away from uh a lot of big uh hard work um mm -hmm. mining as an independent uh contractor or a union person uh yeah is often a thing um very much different from being a convict laborer uh we do not that is not what we're wanting for you um so she's nice i assume all right let's talk about so what goals are you in general hoping to to have with ember like does she want to get revenge Yes. She, okay. um, would it be possible that she doesn't remember her last name? Yes. Okay. I think that might be good. I'm not okay. even sure if Ember is going to be her real first name, but we'll figure that out too. That'll be awesome. 
Um, well, if Tessa's character knew me, then they would know my first name at least. Yeah. yeah. That, um, well, Tessa, do you? How do you feel about Ember as a name, or even if it was just that's all you've known her as? True, it could be a nickname. It could be. Yeah, it could be a nickname. People make up new uh, identities when they move here to to Malifo. So I'm quite content just simply not really knowing if that was your first name or not. So I've always called you. True. That's fair. So it sounds uh, to reason that like if you didn't really remember a name when you first woke back up, obviously that's what my character knew you as. As Ember, so I mean, yeah. there wouldn't be a surname. Okay, I'm good with that. I'll uh, I will come up with a a real name then in the meantime. Ah. I don't remember. <laughs> So, because of some things that you had expressed in the past, Tessa, uh, before our previous session, um, and your eventual goals of you going into the elite division, are you all right with uh, having a certain member of the mimic race uh, having a little bit of an extra interest in you? I'm more than happy with that, yes. Okay, awesome. Then um, you will, I will be sending you fun little things uh, to both of you. <laughs> um, now, I know that TJ's character is closely connected with the Explorer Society, so we will, during our downtime, come up with some uh, nice uh, tie-ins for their character as well. Um, <laughs> so, next. What type of things specifically, Tessa, are you looking for? We have Max looking for a revenge story uh, to some extent. Um, is do you want? Is yours just about like busting that glass ceiling? Like, um, yeah, it's it's about power. Um, I don't. I think throughout the campaign, one thing I like as Tessa, not Helen, want to accomplish is to kind of explore the difference of whether or not the guild actually can work in people's best interests. Or is it just um, a, a sick organization? Yeah, so I'm definitely setting myself up to fail with some of the requests I've made to you. <laughs> um, but Look, setting yourself up to fail can be fun. Um... And then kind of thinking you know, with the Explorer Society, which also very much has a um, well, Cooper's not exactly a good person. He kind of set the whole thing up. Um, you know, most dangerous game kind of vibes going. You know, that just so happens to be maybe he's not the same after losing most of his body. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so I think kind of going down the route of to what extent is someone willing to go to maintain a position of social power? Okay. And kind of playing with that kind of idea. Like, are they willing to sacrifice a friend? to maintain something that they deem as rightfully theirs. All right. Um, Max, tell me something Ember is afraid of. Ooh, interesting. <sighs> Imagine it'd be something funny. I don't know. I, I had an idea for like social interaction, but that doesn't make entirely that much sense from what I described her. Doesn't really care about that. Um, hmm. Definitely not afraid of the cult. Is she? Would she be afraid of fire now? I mean, that's completely up to you. I think that would make sense. She's okay. afraid of melting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can melt. I just don't want to try. All, all exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> if not wanted to find out, I totally get that fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Tessa, what's something that scares Helen? Not being taken seriously. Awesome. They worked hard for that badge. I mean, they didn't. They were kind of born into, you know, a guild family. But <laughs> they worked hard for that badge, damn it. <laughs> and it saved them more times than they can count. Yeah. Um, <laughs> their badge is very You know what? Maybe you can just hide behind Ember during fights. You know, which definitely planning on. They have significantly more hit points than I do. 
<laughs> oh, let me double check. I have I have Ember up here. Um, two two Helens four eight uh wounds. Um, we are looking at seven wounds for Ember. Yep. So almost double your wounds. Just just hide behind Ember. It'll be fine. With the ability to actually pass off those checks as well to stay conscious. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Ah, I pressed the thing. Oh, okay, it's nothing bad. Um, <laughs> all righty. So, um, now we get. I I get to indulge your your any any fan desires slash you know. Oh my God, squee moment. Uh, Tessa, are there any characters, canon characters that you? would really like to have make an appearance. You know one of them. We've discussed this. Yes. Um, him, infinitely. Okay. Um, Sonya Creed has, was my first master I ever played. Um, I think Meeting Co would be cool. Um, All right. Those are my two biggest. I think Nelly's just fun. And getting to despair of just Nelly's incessant questioning oh. as I'm trying to do a job. <laughs> no, that that completely makes sense. Or like anyone from the public relations office as I'm trying to work. <laughs> like I'm just trying to focus on this. Why do you keep asking me questions or telling me things? I don't care how their press works. Uh -oh. It's entirely something amazing to play around with. <laughs> Max, I know that you're not like super knowledgeable about the Fauxverse. Mm -hmm. Are there any characters or any in general type of characters that you you would like to engage with? Particular types of characters. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, do you want monsters? Do you want beasts? Do you want ghosties? I mean, monsters are always fun to fight, right? Um, maybe other undeads would be interesting to interact okay. with because she's not super sure of herself as one but i know other ones are probably like all about it right mm -hmm. so that might be an interesting interaction at least um yeah i think monsters and undead would be okay. uh cool <laughs> awesome i have some ideas all right so, the final thing that uh, I really want us to dig into, and like no no solid decisions, nothing final until we have CJ's input because it's a collaborative effort. Um, but you guys are gonna have your own like base of operations, for lack of a better term, it's a workshop, just an, an area that is for y'all. Um, okay. What? And I think this is going to be largely a Tessa question, just because she knows a bit more about the, the setup uh, of the city. Uh, where in Mal the general Malifaux city area would would you think this would be? Okay, so kind of going off the attitude of we're at least semi-explorers linked. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on exactly what stories we want to be going down, I imagine we'll be operating more within Malifo City and then occasionally going out from what I'm guessing. Again, I okay. don't know. Okay, no, that's completely fair. Um, um, so obviously, don't, you are welcome to prove me wrong there, but... Um... Uh, it just gives me a little idea of, you know, places to suggest. Um, so, like, I mean, Southgate would work pretty well because, I mean... Southgate is where the Malifaux Explorer Society building is. It is. Um, it is. Let me quickly pull up the map of Malifaux. There is also a. If so, then there are some a there are some nice little things that we can add to. To the atmosphere of your home, if you if you choose to stay in uh, Southgate. Mm-hmm. Um, they are south of the central, uh, south of the central slums, um, 
It's the furthest from downtown in the Guild Enclave, but it is well defended by the Guild. Yeah. Um, ever so often, there's some pesky Aether Vox, uh, like playing uh, planes that uh, have some really, really weird, unhinged uh, ramblings about the the melding of flesh and metal, and and talk of Transmortis. Um, don't grow late at night, understood? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> um, yes, uh, so uh, periodically, it's just that mumbling craziness of his lessons. Um, additionally, air car travel is, you know, a, a convenient way, especially for members of the Explorer Society and the Guild, to get around the city. Uh, do keep that in mind, um, because then you don't have to necessarily worry about the checkpoints and whatnot. Alrighty. Um, so if we're in Southgate, uh, tell me the type of things that you want to have at your, for lack of a better term, headquarters. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of thinking, obviously, if I don't know, am I still working on, like, the, the smuggling in the Explorer Society kind of mission? Uh, you, I, I mean, there's always going to be, like, you know, potential threats, but you, mm -hmm. you can, if you want that to still be what you're doing, you, you absolutely can. Otherwise, like, we can take a different, um, yeah. you're, you'll be coming off of a job when we start our first session. Um, okay. So, have an idea of what you want your last job to be. It could have been you finding Ember, or it could have been something else you've done in the meantime. Okay. Um, I'm kind of feeling we probably want somewhere to, like, maintain weapons and stuff. Okay, so, like, at least an armory corner. Yeah. Maybe an attainment cell for interrogations. Oh, I'm sure that's perfectly neat. <laughs> You're totally um, thinking about a get, like a guild officer currently. A mini bar? <laughs> it's going on the list, mini bar. It's very, I'm, like, I, I'm playing someone who's very by the book, so. I understand, but I, I love that, like, Max just pipes in with mini bar. Like, I see Ember be like, y'all. Come on. <laughs> You're not going to use them anymore? Like, maybe. <laughs> That's what I thought. Like, extreme convincing. <laughs> extreme convincing. It's been a really bad day. Um, Jasmine is very good at convincing. Let's see. Wait, Ember. Ember. Mix that up. That's really what happens. Totally I came awesome. up with the other first name, by the way. <laughs> you couldn't tell. <laughs> It's okay. I, I once had someone write uh, my character's, uh, forgot my character's fake identity name and wrote my real character's real identity name on the whiteboard. Um, oh, boy. And yeah, it was fine, except for the fact that, like, no one else knew that was my character. They're like, who's that? And I'm like, I don't know. We just should erase it. Yeah. <laughs> um, All righty. So tell me. Oh, okay. I'm being sent something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the name. Um, Max, why does your Discord icon look like it's about to attack? Oh. Uh, it's definitely not about to attack. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So, um, now... Unfortunately, with CJ not being able to be here, we weren't able to go through their character creation. Thankfully, CJ is very passionate and will be doing a in-character question and answer session. Um, one of the things that I would like to do is I would like each of you to think of basically what is 
one of the like recent losses your character had like something that like just the plan went bad all all over the place like things just it was it was very much a bad time it doesn't have to be something you two did together but um i want you to think of like basically you're coming off of a bad time mm -hmm. the last job went like went very poorly um no one's looking down on anyone about it it was just a mess from a, a start um it kind of raveled apart you know there wasn't any more leads to follow up so i want you guys to y'all to consider that and then um i also want you guys or y'all to consider where what places outside of malifaux city you want to go to we will be focusing a lot on malifaux city but especially max i will get with you about some just general type of vibes you want since you don't know everything uh which it's a lot to know um one place that will be important to both of y'all is helen found ember outside of the city specifically uh in the northern hills mm -hmm. let me see if i can bring up no. on our little map It is going to be right about up here is where you guys. Ember, she was stuck in a cave. Uh, Tessa's character, Helen, came and found you. Um, Helen, there was no sign. You found her, but there was no actual signs of like the the supplies you were looking for. Um, so it came up a dead end except for her. Um, which, haha, dead end. I see what I actually <laughs> did there. Um, Please don't drown them in the ponds. The last thing we need is you to drown them out. <laughs> I mean, wild with them. I, Wednesdays are our pun days because that's when the Waldo's Weeklies come out. And True. If you do not have your dose of puns, Waldo's Weekly is where you get your, your weekly dose of puns. Um, let's see. So, I have a whole lot of stuff uh, set up for you guys, uh, for y'all. One of which is we are going to, once we have a CJ, you're going to be called into a very important person's office. Max, do you have access to the the books? If not, I'll get you some. Uh, no, I do not. Okay, I can get you some. Okay. Uh, I will be sending, making sure y'all have access to the Explorer Society because some of the base material for that will be helpful for you. All right? <laughs> okay, dokie. Um, with that, we are going to end a little bit early today just because I want everyone here for our demo. Um, I had originally planned for us to do I'm on a train, but with the two of you, I'd really like to have CJ here as well. Uh, that makes so sense. we can so we can have our 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 big smashy lady, <laughs> the archaeologist type person who's going to swoon over big smashy lady. <laughs> and then we're gonna have Helen, which I just envision is like snark. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, like so. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so that is all for us today, y'all. Our next stream will be session one. Uh, I will come up with a clever title for it, but it will be starting at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on July 14th. So make sure to join us then. Uh, and we will have everyone flushed out and I don't know, maybe we'll go a little extra and throw some costuming in on that too. Everyone I have now a... have plans for what I want to wear when I start working on it. Oh, just wait until I start with my faction themed makeup. Um, no wonder <laughs> I'm very cool. excited. Everyone have a wonderful week. Uh, for those of you in the US, have a wonderful 4th of July. 
and we'll talk to you all later. Uh, as always, you can find Ink and Liar on twitch.tv slash, is it Ink and Liar? All yes. one word? Yeah. Uh, you can follow us. Our painting streams are coming back starting next week. Again, you can find us at twitch.tv slash playweird. Uh, announcements will be coming out for those. And our Play Weird Discord is open, and you can talk to any uh, uh, talk to fellow Through the Breach fans, fellow Malifo fans, fellow painters. Um, I'm on there being silly a lot. Um, so yeah, Great I'm around the... Yes, uh, I believe a CJ on there as well. They're yeah, so. they're pretty. Uh, at least I think they're one of our mods, actually. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I think they are. Uh, Everyone have a great evening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.